Today I'm going to talk about uh, beam reactions and distributed loads. In order to understand this topic, you have to know about translation and rotation equilibrium. So in case uh, you're not so sure about your knowledge about translation and uh, rotation equilibrium yet, I would suggest you go to my website. Uh, in the mechanics part, uh, you have a couple of presentations as well as video. Uh, to uh, refresh your memory about those two subjects and then you can come back and hopefully will understand what I'm talking about here when I'm talking about beams uh, and their reaction uh, to distributed loads. What is a beam? So beam is a horizontal structural element that usually holds uh, vertical loads. So it could be just a beam between two supports and then some additional forces on it uh, as we have here uh, or sometimes you see it as a support for the roof uh, as we have here in the second uh, picture. The second new item are distributed loads. So far we only have talked about loads that act on one single point. Now distributed loads will act over a certain area. These are actually more realistic uh, loads as every single thing you might put on a beam uh, usually has a surface area. Uh, we're going to consider two main uh, ways of, two main types of distributed loads. One will be uniform distributed loads and the other one is triangular distributed loads. When we want to do calculations with these distributed loads, uh, we first need to figure out uh, what are their equivalent point loads. Now in the uniform case, uh, this is quite simple, the equivalent point load will be uh, the surface area times uh, the load per surface area and it will act exactly in the middle of the distributed load. In the triangular case it's a bit more complicated. The equivalent load will be one half the surface times the load, the maximum load on the right side. Basically what this is, this is the surface area of the triangle here. And the central point where this equivalent load is acting is one third from the bigger side of the triangle and two thirds along the way from uh, the smaller side of the triangle. Now the beam reactions, we already have calculated them in many cases, are simply the forces that come from the supports of the beam. Here I have one on the left on the right side, but you could very well have an additional support if you put a column, let's say, here in the middle. How do we calculate the reaction forces? Well, first we're going to replace the distributed loads by uh, their equivalent loads and then we draw the free body diagram, solve the rotation equilibrium and the translation equilibrium. Nothing here should be new except that we have now these distributed loads. Everything else you should have been able to solve before. Now let's have a look at an example. Here we have a 300 kilogram beam that is loaded with 500 newton per meters as shown and you have the other dimensions down here, 2 meters uh, is the where the load is distributed and the whole beam is 5 meters. Now what was the first step? Exactly, first step is calculating the distributed uh, loads or finding their equivalent point load. Now in this case, this is fairly simple, we had 500 newtons per meter over a length of 2 meters, so we get a total of 1000 newtons. Also the load is acting in the middle 
of the distributed area, so exactly one meter from the right end. Next step is drawing the free body diagram. Uh, I already found my equivalent load here. Uh, of course we have gravity, as you're still on the planet. We have a load on the left, we have a load on the right. And here I chose to put my pivot on the right side. Note that once again you can actually put the pivots wherever you want. Uh, as long as we're in static equilibrium, it has to be in static equilibrium around any point on the object. Once we have the free body diagram, we're going to solve for the rotational equilibrium. Now this you should uh, be able to do, so pause the video uh, while I'm getting a coffee. You're going to do this uh, on your own and then I'm going to come back in a few minutes. So pause the video and solve it by yourself. The answer that you should get for the support A force is 1700 newtons. So pause it, give it a try and then we're going to come back later. So did you solve it? Let's have a look. Uh, so we have, what well, forces are causing us torques here? So we have the torque uh, of the left support, we have the torque due to the gravity, the weight, and we have the torque due to the load, must be zero. The torque through to the gravity as uh, through to A is clockwise, therefore minus, and at five meters distance, FA. The one due to gravity is counterclockwise, so positive. Uh, the thing was 300 kilograms, so 3000 newtons and we are at the distance of 2.5 meters, gravity always acts in the middle, times 3000, and then the load is at the distance of 1 meter, so plus, plus 1, times, and we calculate it's 1000 newtons, is zero, therefore my FA must be 2.5 times 3000 plus 1000 divided by 5. which gives us the 1700 newtons you have seen in the solution before. Now, what's the next step? Exactly, solve the translational equilibrium. So for the translational equilibrium, uh, in x direction we have nothing to solve, the only thing to solve is in y direction. So as before, pause the video and give it a try by yourself. Okay, that was easy, right? All you have to do is look what forces you have in y direction. So we had force A, we had force G, we had the load, and then we have force B, and the total of that, if the beam is not starting to move or anything, should be zero. So we had plus the 1700 from the rotation equilibrium that we already solved and then minus 3000 newtons for the weight minus 1000 newtons for the load plus running out of space again plus FB is zero Therefore, my FB must be 3000 plus 1000 minus 1700 
is 1000 minus 1700 gives me exactly the 2300 newtons uh, as the solution suggests. That's it for today.